You got the middle of the week blues. You want to talk to somebody? I'm available. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. This is Wednesday, February 22nd. Now, hopefully you're in the mood to talk about OTC and penny stocks. Yeah? Cool. Because I have had my head wrapped around them all day long. You know I trade them. And I'm posting news on my Discord group, Facebook, Twitter, all day about things going on in penny stock world. And then, of course, I'm looking for stocks that I can share with you. So I am all over them. And they're everywhere. Could somebody please corral all these penny stocks into one place? They're on the OTC market. They're on the NASDAQ. They're on the New York Stock Exchange. Do you know how many different pages I got to go around to to find this information? Well, most of the time, not many. OTC stocks specifically, but generally speaking, major exchange stocks as well, I get that information right here. The OTCmarkets.com website. This site is set up specifically for investors. The OTCmarkets.com is on the OTC markets. You can invest in them. They have duties to take care of. They do a lot of work here with this site. It's not real fancy, not a lot of colors, but it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. I love it. All that news right there. I get all of my news, 100% of it, about the OTC markets right here. I don't get one stitch anywhere else, ever cross my heart. That link right there is worth a lot to me. News. Click that. The news is at the very top and it comes in as it's released. Just refresh your page. It doesn't come in live, but it's there as soon as I want it. Right there, you've got 10 days worth of news. If you haven't had time to go through it, here's cliff notes for you. Oldest is up at the top. Newest is down at the bottom. And you know what kind of news it is. It's the juicy stuff, the stuff I like. So, this site is where I get all my information, and I advise you come here as well. Updated every single day, folks. Why are you wasting your time running around the internet? If you know the milk's in the fridge, what are you looking for it for in the washing machine? Get out of the washing machine. Get back to the fridge. I swear to God, this will save you so much time and energy. You'll actually start to like doing your research. Okay, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Uh, ooh. Oh, God, that's a mixed bag of nuts there. A lot of ups and downs, please. Something change. All right, we got a wee bit of bump across the board. Okay, but I'm still not excited. Dollar volume, 1.5 billion. We want to be at 2 billion. That's where things start to get warm. Right here, we are still cold. Share volume, 6.2 billion. Well, it's coming up. Hurrah, hurrah. But 10 billion is second gear. We are still crawling right now. And our trades, well, this is sad. I mean, we've been stuck between 250,000 and 300,000 for well over six months. And now I think practically all of February, we have been falling under 250,000. We are now down to 218,000. So it's looking bleak. I've said it before, but it is still looking bleak. What we need, honestly, we need some cannabis laws in America to change. You're saying, what the heck has that got to do with anything, John? Here, little tidbit of facts. There are over 1,000 cannabis stocks on the OTC. There are 12,575 securities. Basically, that is one twelfth of the entire market. Now, I'm not saying all those thousand are U.S. companies, but if laws changed, all the U.S. companies are going to get benefits. They're going to get banking. They're going to get tax deductions. Their bottom lines are going to change. They're going to be in profit just like that. Everything is going to get better, and those stocks are going to run. Now, imagine that. 1,000 stocks taking off all of a sudden on the market. Do you think that could prime the OTC? Do you think that could pull people back in? Hey, we need something, don't we? All right, speaking of needing something, you need some stocks. I did find some for you today. They're an interesting bunch, I'll tell you that much. Let me show you what I got for you. Oh, EPAS, long time no see. This is ticker EPAZ, EPAS Inc. We have looked at this company before, but you probably don't remember. It was about a year ago, January 2022. We not only looked at the company, we did an interview with the CEO. 
that right there is the video. You can check that out anytime you like. Now, the company hasn't had any new filings, but they have had some recent news, a couple pieces as a matter of fact, and they're building on themselves, creating this tsunami of a wave that is creating a window of opportunity that I think we need to take a look at. So EPAS, she finished today at 006, just a little over 9% gains. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got those ever beloved green ticks I'm always harping about, verified profile and a transfer agent. These are precious if you're going to be in the stock for a long hold. Pinks don't get a lot of validated information, and that's exactly what this is. It is information verified behind the scenes by the OTC markets. That's one of their duties. They take care of all that. So if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, make sure to see these. But if you're just playing this stock for a day trade or a short swing, that doesn't matter at all. Get in there and have some fun. So what does ZPAS do? Well, they're doing the same thing that they were doing a year ago, just more of it, and they've expanded. They started off with this program, DeskFlex. Uh, this is a program that helps corporations do their bookkeeping and other corporate workload. And they've been coming up with other programs, buying up these other patented licensed technologies that they can add to DeskFlex. So they've got a whole suite now of programs that help corporations, but they're doing other things as well. This is the definition that they give us in their most current news press. EPAS is a leading cloud-based software company that specializes in providing customized cloud applications to the corporate world, higher education institutions, and the public sector. EPAS Boxes OS version 3 is a complete web-based software package for small to mid-sized businesses, Fortune 500 enterprises, government agencies, and higher education institutions. Box OS provides many of the web-based applications that organizations would otherwise need to purchase separately. EPAS's other products include DeskFlex, room scheduling software, and Provitrack, which is an applicant tracking system. But they've also moved into drone technology, software for drones. Uh, they've been doing quite well with Xenodrone. Xenodrone is dedicated to improving intelligent, unmanned aerial vehicle technology that incorporates machine learning software and AI. It was created to revolutionize the hemp farming sector and later evolved into an intelligent, multifunctional industrial surveillance, inspection, and monitoring solution company. I remember this company. I, was, I have a Penny Pot Stock page on Facebook. It's called Penny Pot Stock. <laughs> and I've had this thing since 2018. And I've been following all the cannabis companies and I post news there and keep everybody up on it. Well, EPAS had this drone, this uh, technology where it went over the field and it could identify male plants versus female plants. Well, female plants are the only ones worth anything. So when you figure out how much a crop is worth, you need to know how many of them are male plants. And they had the technology to do that. Well, that was way back then. They're obviously doing a lot more with it now than just that. But they're still doing that as well. So what was the relative volume around EPAS today? Well, I'm not sure. Let's check this out. Oh, not bad. She's staying even. She went from 8.7 million to 8.2 million. She dropped just a smidge, but really not much considering how slow the market was today. Share structure for this company. All right. We've got a couple different numbers here. Unrestricted. That's the one I normally go for. I figure if it's unrestricted, it's on the market. Anything on the market is considered float. So I normally think that's the float, but I find that is not accurate a lot of the times. But what they tell us the float is, isn't normally accurate most of the time either because it's outdated usually. So if you have an opportunity, if they're a pink, most of the time you can find it just by jumping into a disclosure. Right there we go. Public float, 311 million. This is just inside the disclosure, not too far down. Just put the word float in into a search and you can find it just like that. So we've got 311 million in the float, which isn't too far away from the unrestricted 321. Financials for EPAS. Well, they're doing about a million and a half, well, actually 2 million at the end of 2021. And look at this. This is what you get when you sell software 
You're just duplicating your software. You're selling the license rights to somebody. You didn't have to put anything in a box. You didn't have to use any packaging. You didn't have to mail anything. I mean, when you're working with digital technology, the overhead is nil. As you can see, they didn't pay one cent for the money they made. They got to keep 100% of it. Quarterly, what's going on this year? Well, last year, you know what I mean. Uh, they're doing slightly under a half a million each quarter. And what was it that they did? So they did about two million. So they're running on target right now. We would like to see something jump. And I think that's what the news is going to show us today. Disclosures, like I said, there is nothing going on here. Not since 2017. So let's take a look at that news. All right, I've got news going back here to November. And I just want to give you an overview that this company does a lot of different things. They really do. Just looking at the headlines of the news, you can get an idea of that. EPAS Metaverse with OSRA product will use augmented reality slim glasses for real world overlay. Read the news if you want more. <laughs> then we got another one in November. EPAS Cry Obo aerial blockchain technology integration will monetize crop production, which I was just talking to you about with the hemp. Then another one here in January, EPAS Holdings Xenodrone will use open AI predictive artificial intelligence technology in Xenodrone 1000 units. And that was a big plus for them. That was a smart decision they made. Um, then they got DeskFlex video conferencing. I told you they had that product. They got a piece of news here uh, about a week ago. EPAS Holdings, Xenodrone OpenAI Predictive will conduct flight demonstrations with U.S. government agencies. Now that's a big push right there. Government agencies have huge contracts that last long times. It would be great to get in there. And who knows what they'd use them for. There's got to be a lot of things you can use them for besides weapons. At the beginning of February, EPAS was issued a utility patent for its AI predictive smart charging pad for the Xena Drone 1000. Now we're always talking about batteries for EV cars. How many miles can we get out of this battery? Well, we really need to be working on drones. They've got these little batteries and can't get far. 15, 20 minutes of flight, that's it. That's as far as they can go. Then they've got to land on a pad and they've got to recharge and then take off again. So we do need batteries that give us more time with drones. But in the meantime, we've got to have the charging pad situation set up. And it looks like they're working on that as well. And then we had a piece of news that came out yesterday. They tell us here that the company has announced today that it is submitting over five phase one proposals with the U.S. government under its SBIR phase one program. The SBIR phase one allows small businesses with innovative products to fast track U.S. government contracts in 90 days from the date of submission. Here's the date of submission, 90 days. I know that's a long window, but that is our window of opportunity. If Xena Drone is awarded a phase one contract, up to $75,000 per proposal, the company will be able to submit for phase two contracts then, which is up to $1.2 million per contract. Further, Zen Drone will gain the ability to be listed as the sole source supplier of its technology, which would allow the U.S. government to purchase the Zen Drone 1000s without a bidding process. Uh, the Zen Drone 1000 has successfully garnered positive reviews in several industries, will use predictive AI analytics or predictive modeling. So this is huge, folks. Obviously, that demonstration they had a week ago went well, don't you think? Now they've been asked, I don't know if they've been asked, but they have submitted five phase one proposals at $75,000 per proposal. And if they're accepted, they can put in those phase twos, which will get them 1.2 million per contract. And then they could be put on a source contract list, which means when we need it, you're the source we go to. We don't even go looking for anybody else. That could be huge, folks. So the window of opportunity is large, but how are the investors going to react between now and then? The charts had some activity. Since we looked at it a year ago, it's fallen, but it's approaching those strong resistance support lines now. There is some good ceiling. Let's go take a look at that chart.
Don't act surprised. You knew darn well we were coming over here to think or swim. It's the only trading platform I got. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. They gave it to me for free, and they'll do the same thing for you. So we are looking at EPAS, ticker EPAZ, six-month, four-hour view. But we're going to jump back to where we talked about this before. It was back in January of 2022. Now, this is a three-year, one-week chart. Each bar represents an entire week of trading. And this is when we looked at it in January. She was down here at just a little over 008. We're at 006 right now. And in that week, she ran all the way up to a little over three and a half cents, basically from eight to 36. You're looking at a 400% run right there. I've got a line here at the bottom of that surge, top of the surge, and smack dab in the middle. From there, she has fallen to a low. We hit this in November of 001, and she is now working her way back around, and she's actually crossing the 50-day SMA on a three-year, one-week chart, which isn't bad. Let's look at that six-month, four-hour view. So she's falling underneath the 200, had this irregular drop. This is not a normal low bubble. That's a stab in the dark. You see it came all the way down, bounced right back up, but didn't go anywhere just went sideways. This, this would be more of a low bubble, an invisible one. That one is at 0013, and after it hit it, it bounced hard. Got up on top of the 50 here, stayed on the 50, working towards the 200, and then launched when the news came out. She jumped here from about 003 up to uh, 1.2, almost. You're looking at almost 400, 500% gains right there. Nice run. Then she came all the way down to here, which looks bad, but it was a beautiful landing. Perfect landing. She's right on top of her nine-day SMA. That isn't looking bad at all. The volume is tapering off right now, and our technicals are all tapering off right now. Everything looks to be getting cool. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, she was real cool all this time, just hanging around her 50-day SMA, had that huge jump in one day and came all the way down. Now, I'm going to grab my Fibonacci here, and this is going to show us algorithmic supports and resistances. Poke the bottom of the surge or the top of your drop, and then go to the other extreme and poke one there. These are algorithmic supports and resistances that you can use to trade on. They are good. We are looking at the halfway point. That's what I'm particularly interested in here, and that is right there. Now, I'm going to pull this off right now because that's all I was really interested in. We are underneath that 50% mark. Now, the reason I put that up is I like to see on a huge run, the price stay above the 50% mark because normally if it goes below it, it will continue to fall until it hits a strong SMA. And we can see once she got underneath, she fell down to the 20, bounced on it, but that wasn't strong enough, kept falling until she hit the 50-day SMA. This one is strong enough. She bounced off at once, bounced off at a second time, and she is negotiating to get on top of that 50-day SMA SMA right now. Technicals are no stronger on the one hour. Everything is getting very cool. Looking at our five day, five minute. So we've got that huge jump right here. Boy, look at this. She came up, went sideways, smacked right into that 50 day, bounced off of that, getting another huge jump, has come down underneath that 50% mark found a strong SMA and is working with that now. She did dip here, but she is negotiating this as well. And again, all of our technicals are calm. It's like a big wave came through and it left a little wave behind that and then a little ripple and then a tiny ripple and the water is just going flat. And right now we're waiting for that next wave. This is a good entry point in my opinion. I think it will climb up to this halfway point and then we're going to have to wait for news. Now, hopefully they'll have news come out before three months. That is a long window of opportunity. So if you're considering this, and it will be big news when it comes out, if you're considering this, I would consider buying a portion of what you want right now at this price. Maybe 25%, 30%. Know how much you want. 
buy that amount now and between now and three months from now i assure you most likely it is going to dip for one reason or another you don't have to freak out saying i'm losing my money because you bought everything right now you'll actually be able to buy more at that dip and you'll feel good about it and when the news comes out and this thing takes off you're going to have a great price epaz it could be a longer swing than most want but who knows what's going to go on between now and then this next company's got everything going for it. They've got lots of news making lots of deals. Their revenues are exploding and the chart looks good. Why shouldn't we be looking at PLCKF? This is Purelock Securities. She finished the day just about 15 and a half cents with nothing lost and nothing gained. She was even Steven. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. We call this the better tier, the QB. It's better because you've got to audit your financials. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. But trust isn't a problem with this company. They've got every green tick you could ask for over here. Verified profile and a transfer agent. Independent directors. You need these if you're going to uplist. They probably used them to get to the QB, but I don't know. I haven't checked. They may actually have aspirations to go even higher. Until you do some DD, we won't know. And they are penny stock exempt. This relieves us of the fear that they are a risky startup company. The definition of penny stock exempt means the company's been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars in assets during the entire time and they've kept up with their financial filings. They are responsible. They look good. So what is this company all about? Well, we are told here that PureLock is an innovative, identity-centric cybersecurity company that reduces or eliminates the need for passwords, extra authentication steps, and cumbersome authentication devices. PureLock software leverages state-of-the-art behavioral biometric, environmental, and contextual technologies to provide invisible, adaptive, and risk-based authentication solutions with the lowest possible cost and complexity. They've got an AI that recognizes the way you behave, the way you type, how much delay there is between one letter and another letter, things like that. They tell us over here that PureLock provides identity-centric cybersecurity for today's workforces, the PureLock family of companies enables organizations to operate safely and securely while reducing cybersecurity friction. PureLock offers world-class IT and cybersecurity solutions through its solutions division paired with proprietary AI-driven and cloud-friendly security through its technology division. Together, the PureLock family of companies delivers persistent identity assurance with unmatched ease of use. And I guess it's getting real popular because they are really exploding with business. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, now that's surprising. Honestly, they've had a ton of news. They're doing a lot of business. They're making a lot of deals. They're making money. And that's all we got right now. Boy, she's under the radar. Doing about 14,000 shares a day. Today, she did 17.3,000. Share structure for this company. Get up there. What do we got? 87 million outstanding. They tell us a year ago, the float was 66 million. I went and did a search on Google only found one number all of this I just keep going there's no more numbers but I got one at the top here and I don't know if it's right it's just the only one I got just about 60 million in the float financials well this is something that's looking pretty good from 2019 when they were at a half a million to 2021 where they jumped up to 29 million dollars that is a huge revenue increase looking at 2022 well we've got three quarters here 5.5 million 7 million and 22 million they're growing at leaps and bounds right now folks looking at their disclosures they've got nothing but what they've got is news so all this news, I'm only going back to January. All this news is from January, February. Now they've been making deals back here before then, but I just want to focus in on what's happening right now. 
in the middle of January, they announced that they are now using ChatGPT, that open AI program that everybody's using and seems to really be doing a good job. Not just helping the businesses, but helping the stocks to rise in price. Then from February 2nd until yesterday, we've got all of these deals. A cross-sale purchase order for flagship cybersecurity platform from U.S. Credit Union. What they mean by cross-sale purchase, this is a Canadian company. They've been doing a lot of business in Canada. They would like to do business in the U.S. There's a lot of business here. So they got their first cross-sale purchase here. They were quite excited about it. And then five days later, they had another one. They got a deal with a U.S. financial institution. Now, they're not giving us the names of these companies. It is for security purposes, right? Uh, then they had uh, seven new California multiple award schedule contracts. And on the 14th of February, multiple year sale order for flagship cybersecurity software with overseas IT solutions provider. Then on the 16th, another multi-year contract renewal for flagship cybersecurity software with Mutt Hut Finance. And then we had one on the 21st yesterday, contract for flagship cybersecurity platform with overseas mortgage lender. The deals are just pouring in one after another. People like what this company is doing. As a matter of fact, they have had a lot of information written about them. And I've got a couple over here I want to share with you. Uh, we got this one. The Defense Department recently awarded Canadian company Purilock a contract. Its product can gather enough data within three seconds and 12 keystrokes to distinguish one user's typing behavior from any others within an organization. And we got another one over here, um, right there. Former U.S. Director of National Intelligence, DNI, and the National Security Agency, NSA, Vice Admiral Mike McConnell joined the board of directors of Purilock. McConnell's appointment follows a long tradition of intelligence officials who have tra transitioned to the private sector. So they are dealing with big contracts. They're dealing with the Department of Defense, the U.S. Army. They're bringing on big names. They're making a lot of deals. The revenues are pouring in. Security is a big issue. Passwords are a big issue. And if you can get around the problems of the individual and have an AI take care of all that security, things are going to be better. I like what I'm seeing, and I like it even more looking at the charts. Let's go take a look. Ooh, that's a sweet chart. Remember I told you yesterday to keep your eye open for this sort of chart setup. These are breakout setups. This is ticker PLCKF. This is a six month, four hour chart. Now keep in mind, she isn't getting a lot of volume. She's getting 13,000 shares a day. Today she had 17,000 shares. So we had a high bubble back here in August of 21 cents. We had a low of about eight and a half cents mid January. And off of this low bubble, she has been climbing. She's worked her way up over that 20-day SMA, the 50-day SMA, and then charged, just charged to that 200, busted through it, and has pulled back and is sitting perfectly pristine on her 9-day SMA right at the 200-day. That's a beautiful setup. Volume is pretty consistent and strong right now. Technicals were very strong, but they are cooling off a tidbit right now because of this pullback. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was under a 20-day right here with this low bubble, just over $0.09, cents, pushed up with a lot of volume here, launched up over that 20, up over the 50, and on top of her 9, and just ran for days until she hit $0.17 cents here, and then she's pulled back, and it looks like she's going to bounce off of the 20. We can see our bars here are getting thinner and thinner. Now, if your chart don't look like this, it's because I'm using the Heiken Ashi bars, not the bars, the uh, candlestick bars. These are the Heiken Ashis. And she's getting level right now on top of that. So I'm presuming we could get a bounce off of this. Technicals are still weak. They still look like they're pushing down right now. Not very hard, but they are pushing down. Five day, five minute. 
All right, there's our 20-day SMA. She was staying above that, negotiating with it, and here comes a new SMA, the 50-day, and it's below the price. Now, this worries me a little bit because I see in a lot of cases when a new SMA comes on the board, the price will normally gravitate to it. It doesn't matter if the price is under it or over it. It'll just go to it. Sometimes it'll hang around, but a lot of times it just tags it and runs back to wherever it was. So it's sitting there and it's been ignored for an entire day. So maybe she'll continue to ignore it and get back on path. I do see our nine day here is trying to do a swoop over. So we are at that, that point right now. We've got to see if she wants to go up or down, but she is making a lot of money. She's got a lot of deals that are coming in, which are going to bring in more money. I just can't see how this stock can be a loser. She's at a good point right now to consider, and we know the company is growing. PLCKF, I think it's going to be hot. Now, this last stock we're looking at, real curious. I did find this by looking at the charts, but it hasn't got a warm chart. I'll be honest. What it's got is a peculiar chart. It was looking good up until February 6th, and then all of a sudden it took this huge drop, and I think it even fell for a few days to a deep bottom, and it's like, for goodness sake, what caused this? I want to know, is this a justified drop, or is there something we can get for recovery? So I came over here going through the news and the filings, looking for that negative catalyst. I couldn't find anything. You know why? Because there has been no news or filings all this year. 2023 is bare. However, they do have a piece of news at the end of last year about a deal that they're making. And that looks like a catalyst that is going to come up underneath this unjustified drop and push it up. We could get some serious gains out of this. So this is PSWW, Principal Solar. She finished the day at 0047 with 13% loss. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those green ticks I'm always telling you about. Looking good. Now, they tell us a little bit about the company here, but I think it's hogwash. They've got news presses that came out in June and July of last year, which sounds like they're doing business. But everywhere I looked, I don't see any business. I don't see any revenues. To me, it looks like a shell company. They claim to be a holdings company, but I don't see them holding anything. Not yet. That's about ready to close. So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, she jumped. <laughs> it figures. She has a decline on the charts and she jumps in volume from 2.4 million to 3.1 million. Share structure. All right, what do we got? 592 million outstanding. They claim there are 254 unrestricted and 94 in the float, and that's an old number. So I went and did a search over at Google, only found one number, 154 million. Is that the float? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, but that's what they tell us. Financials, not a good place to come. It's barren. We've only got $5,000 at the end of 2021, and thank God they didn't have to pay anything for it. They needed all of it. And quarterly for 2022, we got nothing going on here. I don't see any money anywhere. And taking a look at their balance sheet, they've got $53,000 in cash. Still got to add those three zeros to any of the numbers here. And total assets, well, that's not bad. They've got $5.2 million in assets. Thank God for that. And their liabilities are less, 3.3. So they got a couple million in assets. Thank goodness. Disclosures, any 8Ks or anything going on over here? No, we got nothing since mid-2022. So let's jump on over to that news. All right, some of this news comes from mid-2022, like this one. Principal Solar and Triad Pro Innovators to collaborate on electric vehicle energy storage solutions. Well, that sounds like they're doing something. That sounds like business to me. Also in July, Principal Solar announces plan to separate its oil and gas subsidiary. I didn't see no gas subsidiary anywhere. I didn't see any revenues. And then here in uh, also June of last year, Principal Solar enters partnership agreement with Aramis to rework eight wells in Caldwell County, Texas. I'm not seeing this stuff anywhere. So I don't know what they're talking about. It looks like they're doing something here, but when you go look at everything else, 
You don't see any activity. You don't see any revenues. Then they had this last piece of news that came out December 15th. They tell us here that Principal Solar today announced it has entered into a joint venture agreement with Executive Logistics and Transportation for the purpose of expanding ELT's existing logistic operations into new markets beyond its current activities in Tennessee and Southeastern United States. You've got a trucking company here and this company, Principal Solar, is going to invest money into them to make them profitable. That's what they're doing. ELT currently operates a fleet of approximately 30 Class 8 trucks and trailers, and the new joint venture is expected to facilitate an increase in fleet vehicle count as well as enable future EV and hybrid vehicle conversions. So this holdings company that's looking like a shell company is closing in on a deal right now on a trucking logistics company that they're going to invest in and help expand their footprint to make more money. And whatever money ELT is already making, that's going to become their revenues. That's going to be part of them. And that is happening now. We just haven't had any new news. This came out, what was it? The 15th of December. And here we are the 22nd of February. We're overdue for some news. Not to mention the stock has had a, looks to me, like an unjustified crash. So between the catalyst and the crash's recovery, we could get a double boost here and push it up quick and hard. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is PSWW, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble six months ago of about three cents, 0 0.028. And then we had a low here just a couple days ago of double zero four seven. You can see the volume is real strong right now. She has been falling for quite a while, but then going sideways, waiting for this 200 day SMA to get close. It got close. She got up on top of it. And then right here on February 6th, she took a fall. She was up here at 0 0.013. Let's call that 13. And it fell all the way down here to four. Let's call it five. So it's down at five right now. And it fell from 13. You're talking like 160, 175% to get back up to there. Why did it fall? I don't know. There's no news, there's no filings, there's no tweets. What made it fall that far? There could be a justified 175% gains here just because it fell for no reason. Then tag on that catalyst. If any piece of news comes out that says we are now making revenues, we've closed this deal, such and such, boom, that's putting nitro underneath this and we could get a nice push up really strong. So that's what we're looking for here. Our technicals, well, look at this big old fat bottle. You see this top roll down, you see this bottom roll up, that big ball right there. Well, when you see those two coming together, that blue line and that red line, guaranteed the price is falling. And boy, was it ever. As soon as you see these two separating and they're going opposite directions, guaranteed 100%, no doubt about it, absolutely, positively, it is going up. I love my PPO and ADX sitting here watching for these patterns. Our MACD, we've just had a crossover. She is starting to grow right now, but our RSI is in the basement. Oh goodness, she's down there at 32. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So we were at a high back here of 0 0.0169. Let's just call that 17, take away the zeros. She came down through her 200 day SMA hard. This is our fall right here, going from February 6th all the way down to February 13th, where she is now crawling across the floor hit a low bubble, has pushed off, and is now scraping. Look at this. She's just scraping up against that curb called the 50-day SMA. She's underneath the nine-day right now, still looking weak. She needs, needs to get over that nine to get on top of that 50, and then maybe we can get a pop. Uh, technicals are weak. All of them are falling right now. Not real hard, but they are pushing down slightly. And on our five-day, five-minute. All right, we need this 200-day uh, SMA to start to level out a little bit. And as long as the price keeps falling, it won't. This needs to start coming up so this can calm down. Bouncing off of our low bubble, 
She did change her direction. She got up over that 50. She wants to climb. You can see that she pushed all the way up to that 200 and tagged it and then came back down and has come through her 50 and she's falling. She's probably doing this like on water, a ball that goes under the water and then just tries to surface. She's working it right now. So it was a deep fall. She's shaking it off and we're waiting for this catalyst. Timing is good here, folks. She is already at a cheap price. We're not looking for a better price. This could be it. And if that catalyst comes out, wham, we could get a huge bounce off of this. PSWW, she's fallen hard, can't find a reason why, got a strong reason to start climbing when this catalyst comes out. Two plus two can equal cha-ching. All three of these stocks have got strong catalysts. PSWW, not only has it had an unjustified fall, as far as I can tell, with a lot of recovery potential, but she's got a catalyst that could kick in at any time and launch this thing. Then we got EPAS. They got contracts sitting on the line with the government for their drone technology. That could be huge. And the very last one we looked at, Remind me, oh, PLCKF, lots of business, lots of deals they're making. Money is pouring in, revenues are jumping at leaps and bounds. All of these companies have got strong catalysts and the charts are in our favor. Remember folks, I like to do my due diligence in charts now. I think you should practice it as well, but do your due diligence because the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.